Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to help you make your knitted tops and camisoles fit better. Okay, so you guys know how much I love my knitting and also how much I love my sewing and when they come together it is perfect harmony. So today I'm going to show you how a little hand sewing can make your knitted garments fit, fit even better. And if you like this, please let me know because I can make it a series. I can also show you how to use sewing to maybe fix the neckline of a sweater, to make cuffs fit better, all that kind of stuff. But today I'm looking at a knitted tank top. So today I'm going to be working with the Sunset Camisole from Sari Nordland, and I'll put in a picture of it. I love this cami, and I tested this, and the only thing is I made it in a linen blend, and because of that, it does have some weight to it, and it has started to stretch out. So I'll put in a picture, just that I took this morning, or a video, of what it looks like from the side, and you can see that I can't comfortably, or I couldn't comfortably wear a bra with this tank top. And I don't know if you've had this problem, but it's happened with a couple of of my tank tops, especially when I'm using, or camisoles, especially when I'm using um, a natural, like non-wool fiber that doesn't have recovery. So if I'm using silk or if I'm using linen, cotton, stuff like that, it just doesn't have that bounce back. And so what does have bounce back is elastic thread. So we'll be using elastic thread today to improve the fit of our knits. So that brings me to today's sponsor, and that is VeloStar. VeloStar has handy solutions for life's minor complications, and I have three of these really great kits, and I use them constantly. The only problem I might have is keeping everything with their own kit, because I have three of them, but like, look at all this gorgeousness. Even just the colors alone are so, so beautiful. And this is the large one, and what I love about this one is that it also has some knitting things that we can use to improve our knits. So we've got some clips, which are really good for holding down hems while we're trying to sew them. We've got some stitch markers here. Um, so always great to have some stitch markers around. Who doesn't need a tape measure all the time? I remember watching one podcaster from Toronto and he always said he puts like a, one of these in every one every one of his project bags, which I think is very, very smart. And we've got a crochet hook, really good for picking up drop stitches, also for reinforcing a neckline, which we can do another time. And what we're gonna be using today is the snips and also this darning needle. So I'm gonna put this down. So we all have lots of these darning needles, and honestly, it doesn't really matter which one you use, as long as it's going to work with the gauge. This, for me, is working with this sport weight just fine. Um, you could find a finer one if you needed. Um, I also have some thinner darning needles in here that I could use that are metal if you don't like to work with plastic here that's got, I don't know if it's going to focus, but it's got a nice large eye on it. And so I could have used this, this as well. But for me, I actually like the bright color because as it's going through the center of the, um, the straps, I'm able to see it going through and that makes me sure that I'm kind of on the right path. So thank you to Velastar for sponsoring this video and let's get adjusting these tank tops. So to start off, I took a cami that I knew fit me well and I used the tape measure to measure around the circumference of that armhole and then I added 20% and that gave me about what I would need in elastic. Now alternatively, you can honestly just unwind some elastic and keep the end attached to the ball or the, the spool of elastic and just go around. You actually don't even need to measure, but I just like to do that. That. And so I'm taking the snips here and cutting it to the length that was my circumference plus 20% and then I'm just putting it onto the darning needle. And then what I'll do is I will turn my tank top inside out because I want to work on the inside edge. I really don't want you to see this elastic once it's in place. So I like to start at the underarm and I just wanna find, sort of similar to when you're closing up the holes under an underarm, I wanna find the purl stitches. Just to start, I'm going around kind of anything here to hold that elastic in place, so now it won't go anywhere, that end. And then I'm just looking for purl bumps along this edge that I can loop around and go through. And that alone will tighten up under the armhole, just like it would if you tightened up the armholes under a sweater or a cardigan. And so I'm just working my needle through that. Even if I split it, I don't mind too much, but I like to check the other side to make sure that I am not going to be able to see the elastic on the outside. And if you stick to purl bumps on the inside, 
you generally will not see that elastic on the outside. You could even work one row in from the edging if you wanted, but as you can see here, the edging just gives me a nice path to follow and you can see the elastic on the inside, but not on the outside. So I'm just picking up each one of these purl bumps as I go along and working my way to the top. Now, sometimes they're hard to get into because they've been pulled really tight. Just be patient, work your needle in there. And then when I get to the top, I'm almost now at the, in this case, it is an I-cord strap. And so I'm literally gonna take my needle and once I get to the top, I'm going to work the needle right through the center. Sorry, I've got a little bit off there in my camera angle, but you, you get the idea. You wanna work right through the center of that tube. And like, like I said, this is what it helps to have uh, a, a nice color for your needle because I can really see the path that it's going. Now, don't worry if it pushes out. That's actually fine. Sometimes it helps to kind of reset, pull it through, see where you are, and then just feed right back in through the same hole so that you continue on the path through to the other side. And it's sort of similar to, you know, turning a, turning a strap in sewing. It's a little finicky, but once you get through, it's worth the hassle. And now we're on the other side. And again, I'm just going to continue on and pick up each one of those little purr bumps. I do wanna make sure when I come around that I'm going back the right direction. It's sometimes easy to get out of place and you end up going down through the front or the back of the garment. Make sure that you're continuing uh, with the armhole. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. Now when I get to the end, I'm just gonna tie it off by tying a square knot. I don't know if any of you were ever Girl Guides or Girl Scouts, but when you tied your your tie around your neck, it was left over right and under, and then right over left and under. And so I'm doing a version of that. And once that's done, I just give it a snip and then weave in the ends and that should stay put. And that's all done. I would say the whole thing took me about 20 minutes to do both armholes and it was very satisfying, all finished and beautiful. And that's it. So here's the after and it just feels so much more comfortable. I'm not conscious of the fact that I'm, it might be slipping off my shoulders. I'm not conscious of the fact that like underneath my arm, it might be sagging down. I it was very careful to really lay it flat before I tied off the elastic, just to make sure that I wasn't gonna end up with a, uh, a bumpy or rumpled, ruffled texture along the side. So yeah, and this just has a, just a little bit of give to it. Now, if I wanted to, I could do the same thing along the front. Right now, I'm happy with this. I'm conscious that this is a, a deep V in the front, but if you saw in the first video, you could actually see my bra. Like my bra is here. So it, it has raised it up like a good inch, inch and a half, just by raising up the straps. And, and I think that those probably would have continued to stretch out. So let me know below if you ever use sewing techniques in order to improve or change the fit of your knits. I'd love to hear if you've done that before or what you would like help with learning in the future. I'd love to add more tutorials to this channel. And um, I think that it's a useful thing to have because we put so much time into our knits. I mean, if we put a lot of time into our sewing, we put so much time into our knits. And so it's a bummer to get to the end and because it's maybe slipping off the shoulder or the neckline is stretching too much or something is bunching the way it shouldn't that we can't you know still wear our knits so let me know below what you would like to see there or if you have done something like this yourself thanks again to velostar for sponsoring this video if you click on the link below you can head over to see them and see what discounts they have on right now Okay guys, that's all for me. I hope that wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are knitting or sewing or doing whatever makes your crafty heart happy. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.